Art has been around for as long as humans have been able to create it. Something to take note of, though, is the amount of influence art has had on popular forms of media. Whether it be a film, a television show, or maybe even just a cartoon, art seems to show itself both indirectly and directly in many forms of things that we enjoy today. You would call something like this artistic direction. It has a strong influence on the visual aspects of movies and film. Actual paintings have shown up in more popular films of recent years. In fact, this painting right here that was seen in Disney's Frozen actually happens to be a recreation of the famous painting The Swing by jean Honoré Fragonard. And it doesn't stop there. The amount of influence that can be seen in film these days doesn't have to come directly from art, but can often be compared to or inspired by it. Many scenes in The Patriot can look like a handful of famous paintings from America's past, be it a war or otherwise. As a matter of fact, increased um, attention to artistic detail in recent video games has been shown with multiple forms of propaganda created just for that game's universe strictly. Oftentimes they'll have conveyance of religion uh, elevating political figures of the time to a religious status, whether it's a political statement or just a means of having an interesting method of storytelling is not always clear. But by making those political figures of our history into gods, there's many comparisons that can be drawn in our art history today. As a matter of fact, a lot of video games tend to pay homage to very different forms of art, be they religious or otherwise. Religion can show itself in very popular movies or video games, but it's not always the most in-your-face form of display. It's more subtle, although in cases like this, the imagery is not a coincidence. This character actually becomes a god within the story of the video game. The religious narrative is there for all to see. In the finale of this game, the religious theming is only strengthened by the fact that a majority of the instruments used in the final music are organs and various other instruments that you would probably hear in a visit to church. Whenever we think of art with symmetry, one that comes to mind would be the painting American Gothic. One director that emulates this sense of symmetry is Wes Anderson. In many of his films, the amount of symmetry is often overwhelming and it's very hard to overlook. It's a very unique, but at the same time humble, style of shooting, and it's seen in just about every single one of his films. It's very easy to spot a Wes Anderson film just by looking at it, especially in some of the more recent ones. The amount of colors and contrast he uses in each scene make it so pop out-ish. It, it pops out at the viewer and the contrast between the figures and the colors in the background are incredibly pleasant to look at. As a matter of fact, one of the more recent films, The Grand Budapest Hotel, was actually all about a stolen painting. She's been murdered and you think I did it. Watching this film is a lot to take in. There's so many uses of colors, and whether they be contrasting or complementing the other, there's always something on the screen that pops out at you by excellent use of space and the amount of zooming in and out with the camera. It really puts perspective into a whole new light. And speaking of lighting, the amount of excellent lighting found in every single scene of this movie is another thing that elevates the type of storytelling. There's just really nothing negative I have to say about this film. It's, it's incredibly excellent and is definitely worth checking out. Thrilling chase scenes, excellent casting, and absolutely wonderful comedy make this one of my favorite films of all time, and I feel that Anyone who has seen it will probably never forget it anytime soon. Much like a painting can leave a lasting impression on a person, I think this film also manages to just create imagery that will stay with you for a very long time. And that's really what art is all about at the end of the day, invoking emotion in us and allowing for us to observe and to appreciate. <clears throat> 
What kind of bird are you? I'm a sparrow. She's a dog. No, I said. What kind of bird are you? Another recent film of his, Moonrise Kingdom, shows even further just how well color, contrast, and hues can be used to further the viewing experience. Using nature as a motif, it really shows just how the saturation of colors can make nature look even more natural, but also give it sort of a fantasy-esque, almost sort of a glowy vibe to it. Much like American Gothic, the uh, use of colors to depict the lifestyle that these people on this island lead are not in short supply. With every shot, with every angle, in the ways that American Gothic depicts the American lifestyle at that time, there's still a sense of timelessness to it. And there's the same sense of timelessness when watching this film. Wes Anderson isn't the only person to use symmetry, however, in their film directing. Stanley Kubrick also exemplified the amount of symmetry and color contrast in his film The Shining. The critically acclaimed film was based on Stephen King's novel and showed an American couple in a much scarier light, both psychologically and physically. The film's use of lighting was very exceptional as well and allowed for many special effects to become even creepier depending on the atmosphere. The use of light and darkness is something that becomes much more prevalent in video games as well as uh, technology advances and more realistic things are created. However, with art, realism isn't always key. A lot of media can borrow from surrealist artists such as Vincent van Gogh and employ them into their media. And they're shining, burning, bursting through the stars. Can you see how they roll their light? Everywhere we look, complex magic of nature blazes before our eyes. In the film Coraline, the sense of surrealism can be used to create a sort of escapist fantasy this young girl finds a portal to another world, one where she enjoys herself more and is treated like she'd like to be treated. In her world, it's bleak and the colors are very unappealing to the eyes, but when in the other world, the colors are much brighter and they flash more. Using color as such a key element of the story in a way like this shows just how important art is in all forms of media. A great example of when art is directly referenced would be some of the Looney Tunes cartoons. It's a silly, lighthearted approach to a painting that everyone has seen before. Well, this is surreal. Salvador Dali's surrealism really shines in the style of animation that's shown here. However, this was far from the first time Looney Tunes referenced Salvador Dali's form of surrealism. Although cartoons tend to be a much sillier form of media, than the seriousness that surrealism can instill, they still sort of go hand in hand. The amount of fourth wall breaking going on in the show already seems to evenly fit with something as complex and strange as this. The director of Pacific Rim, Gilmaro del Toro, says the painting Colossus directly affected his choice to make the movie Pacific Rim, a film about giant monsters fighting robots for the fate of humanity, the usual stuff. However, this painting didn't inspire just that film. There's an incredibly popular video game known as Shadow the Colossus that is quite literally about fighting giant colossus for the sake of a girl. There's just something timelessly poetic about giants and monsters and fighting to save the princess, and this game seems to bring a lot of those tropes to the table. Mm -hmm. 
Art is imitated in all forms of media and will always be imitated. The things to look forward to are endless, especially considering how rich our history is. Many comparisons can be made, and there will probably be tons of analogies for films that haven't come out yet or films that have been out for a long time.